Hello, I'm Craig Ferryman. Joining me now on Meet the Candidates here on QMTV is another candidate vying for the position of Yulu Vice President. He is Ikramul Chowdhury, who is a final year undergraduate student in history at the School of Oriental and African Studies, SOAS, where he's also the former president of the SOAS Model United Nations team. He joins me now. Welcome along to the programme. Let me begin by asking you, what in your mind is the role of a student's union? For me, a student union has two roles. First of all is to campaign on issues which are close to the students' hearts. So that can range from fees to certain political issues. The second role is about providing services for students. So that can range from legal advice, housing advice, or you know, you know, even running a bar or sports clubs or societies. So for me these are the two basic roles, campaigning on issues and providing services. Okay, now what makes a good Yulu Vice President and why do you think you're better qualified than any other candidates who are running in this race? For me, a good Yulu Vice President is somebody who's able to find a balance. The remit of a Vice President is internal campaigns as well as improving services for students. So I believe that in my manifesto I've had the right balance of those. So for example, I want to um, campaign on international visa reforms as well as improving services so such as the services at Mount Street as well as my free book pledge. So I believe that well, if I'm Vice President, I've chosen issues which I can um, provide on and which I can ensure that I'm able to feel, fulfil those promises. Okay, now engagement in Yulu is low. What is the institution doing wrong? I think when I was writing, I was asking guys, I was asking my friends, guys, you know what Yulu does? They was like, well, not really, it's just that building in Mallet Street. It's, got, it's quite shocking because it is quite an important union. So I think, again, it's because it's purely focusing on campaigning that it's lost sight of its services. So students feel alienated. Furthermore, if you're, for example, a student at Royal Holloway, say George's or even Queen Mary, you're quite distant. So it's not quite easy for you to come into Mount Street all the time. Hence why I want to improve the services so students can engage with the union far more better, such as doing it online, for example. Well, how would you improve society's sports and also the facilities of Yulu? Well, first of, first of all, um, for example, if you're not near Mount Street, the services, the rub sites in this array. So I want to ensure better service access for it. So you could have pre-registration for the gym. We could fully digitise the housing service. So it makes it much easier. Instead of having to search for the University of London Housing Service, have a direct link on the website. We could also have um, all the volunteering opportunities on the website. We have a jobs board. So for example, employers or intern opportunities can advertise. So not only does that provide an income stream for us to improve the services for to improve services as well as find more opportunities for sports. In terms of sports access, um, quite often it's some people see uni sports as quite elite. It's often they're you know the best students of a uni. That is fair enough. I just want to ensure that there's better awareness because not a lot of people know what goes on that uni. Often there's the uni's fresh affairs at the start of the year. Most people go to those and then they forget about it. What will you do to ensure that people actually not just have more awareness of the fact that there's a Yulu as well as their own students' union, but actually want to go and be a part of it all. I think it's about providing societies and sports such well, what students are interested in. I don't remember we have a good mix, but as often, it's often dominated by people who are at the Bloom Street campus. So, for example, UCL or so as even Kings down by Strad. So, encouraging those students to more well, engage, I would perhaps even you could do surveys or even um, select groups to advise me and what would they like to see, what sports and what other societies they'd like to see provided at Yulu. What would be the key internal campaigns that you would run? For me, my key internal campaigns would be to ensure that we can reduce emissions by 10%, as well as the free book pledge, which is the ability for all UL undergraduates to borrow free books from another library, often at most, often it's only restricted to UL staff and UL postgraduates. I believe by having the free book pledge, it is workable and it's not a goal which I can't achieve on. In terms of other campaigns, I would like to ensure better um, equality access. For example, if you're, example, you are a female minority or an LGBT minority, often most people think that those issues are solved. I want to ensure that if you're, for example, a lesbian or gay person, that you're, you feel 100% comfortable at a university, because there's still we still have quite a long way to go. I want to show better awareness for um, LGBT month in February and Women's Month in March. So for me, it's about um, providing services as well as um, campaign for better visa reforms. So at the moment, sorry. Yeah, well, I was just going to pick you up on the point you said about uh, liberation campaigns. In a sense, they already exist at the moment. Yeah. Um, Black History Month was held last year. Are you 
You're saying you're going to build on those campaigns? I think we can build on those campaigns and also make them more interactive. I think quite often when you, for example, have Black History Month, quite a lot of people might think, oh no, it's only restricted to black minority ethnic students. I don't think it should be just for that. I think it should be about engaging with other, with non-black and minority ethnic students. So it can be, that's the only way you can truly combat any forms of discrimination. You can't just have a mark where it's black and minority ethnic, but it's about interactions with other groups and other peoples. Okay, um, what qualities would you look for in a president to compliment you as a vice president? For President Uyilu, as far as I'm concerned, as long as they have they have focus on the issues and, for example, part of the remit is taking part in external campaigns and, and other important national issues. So in terms of a president of EU, I think they should focus on that. I believe as long as they're level-headed, as long as they're clear on what students want, as long as they serve the students, I think they will make a good president of EU. So for me, a good EU president is somebody who doesn't lose focus, who listens to students' needs and fully represents the, needs, the interests and needs of students of the University of London. And so even if they have all of those qualities but they don't necessarily get on with you, that's not important? That's not important. It's not about characters. For as far as I'm concerned, they could hate my guts. As far as I'm concerned, as long as they serve the interests of the students, I'll work with them, we'll maintain a professional relationship. Now without naming names, how would you, um, how, how would you say the incumbent has done this year? I believe um, the incumbent has stayed true to They've done a lot of campaigns, um, and yeah, they've had a national prominence um, in terms of. But again, that's all they've done is about protesting campaigns. So I think the incumbent has done enough to raise awareness of issues, but how effective is that? I think that still remains to be seen. Well, look, there has been some criticism that the incumbent hasn't done enough on protests and campaigns. Well, I think in terms of protesting campaigns, it's how you issue it. I think the main problem with student campaigns is that. We lost the um, fight in the media because immediately it was portrayed as you know students being violent, and I think that was quite a shame. I think in terms of students and creators, it's not about the shit content; it's about making sure that they are truly effective in ensuring that we can get our messages across to the rest of society. And I believe that with campaigns and protests, it's not about the content; it's about how you make them effective. Okay. Um, now, your manifesto pledges. Um, of having daily blogs, weekly emails, etc. Yeah. Don't you think that this will just get in the way of actually creating improvements in the lives and student experience of other ULU members? Not necessarily at all. In terms of a daily blog, it could take, it will take no more than five to ten minutes of telling exactly what I plan to do for the rest of the day. It's about students know, knowing exactly what I'm up to. For it is a full-term sabbatical position. Students have the right to know what I am up to. But as I, and so I believe that it will not take any time and it will not distract me from the issues that I'd wish to um, provide and campaign for. What kind of outreach do you imagine it will, uh, it will go out to? I believe it just makes sure that the whole of the University of London community knows what I'm doing because I think that's the main problem about uni. A lot of students don't know what uni does and they do not know what sabbatical teams and part-time offices do. So it's just about making sure that they know what we're up to and I think that's the main problem is that it's a lack of communication and a lack of people not knowing. In a sense, Yuli has become this sort of ghost character. We know it's there, but we're not quite sure what it does, or if it's, it's just, it just seems to be this non-described character. Okay, sure. Now, a final question. You have also been accused of trying to piggyback on the successes of the current Yuli Vice President, the incumbent. Uh, so, in, t in terms of new current policies, what new things can you bring to Yuli? I think those criticisms were ridiculous. Um, I fully can acknowledge that they created, um, you know, certain services like Relintir, but my point is that I want to improve in those services, and those services have now become part of the remit and portfolio of ULU, which means they are up for genuine criticism and articles for improvement. In terms of my own original policies, I want to deliver on a free book pledge, which is the ability for students to borrow free books from any other UL institution. I want to fight on the visa reforms, perhaps dropping sponsorship requirements for, for all institutions which were established by a Royal Charter of Active Parliament. And also, for international students after graduation, I want to extend their time of stay from the four months to six months for their ability to find work. For example, um, doctors who finish their foundation programme, they only have 30 days to find work. I would extend that to at least three months. And I campaign to lobby with okay. the international offices. And furthermore, I'd like to have monthly surgeries for students when they can come and speak to me on issues that they think they would like me to raise. Okay, Cranwell Chowdhury, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.